Welcome back custom car fans. Thank you for tuning in yet again. Today is a little bit different. Today's video is not gonna be a build thread type update, a project update. We are gonna focus today on one part and one part only. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is I'm gonna go through the complete process to design and make a one-off part for Bernard Kerr's twin turbo post van build. So let's get straight into the design work and I'll show you what's involved. So here we have an indicator stalk. This is an off the shelf, sort of generic hot rod type custom car kit car indicator assembly. It would have had a little basically Jubilee clip type arrangement here, which would have tightened around a column. The problem we've got is we don't have a steering column in the traditional sense in this vehicle. And so I can't bolt that onto the tubular outer part of a column and do it up as it was intended. But instead using this as a base, we can take some measurements and we can make a housing to be able to bolt this up under the dash. So how am I going to go about that? Well, the first thing that I've noticed is this obviously comes apart. And so we have the workings of the switch here. Now I'm going to keep that trim piece over the top. It serves a purpose and it will clamp everything together. But what I'm going to do is basically make a custom housing for this switch section. So what I'm going to do is take some measurements with my vernier here, just to try and start the process of designing a little housing, which I'll then probably CNC plasma cut because that's the facilities we have in house. And that's certainly a lot more cost effective than having something milled out of a block of aluminium. So first step is just to measure, that's nice and easy, 20 by 27. So I'm just gonna draw the cutout I want in my face plate, and that was 20 by 27. And then we can look at the overall size of the housing. Now the fascia here is about 55, 56. So really that's the fundamental measurement is the section of the switch that needs to go through the face plate of my housing. It occurs to me though that if we're gonna be folding this out of aluminium, I need to probably try and make the part suitable for the tooling that I've got available to me. So I'm gonna go over to the mag brake and just see what size sections of um, the top parts for the magnetic brake I've got that will fit inside my part. Because if I make it five mil undersized based on my tooling, then I'm gonna have difficulty folding it. Whereas if I match it to the width of some of my tooling, then I'm just gonna be able to fold that up easily and get the job done quickly. So here we are, I've got the different width uh, sections, top sections, as you can see by this one on the mag breaker at the moment. And what I wanna do is measure one of the smaller ones and hope that I can design my part accordingly. What have I got here? This one looks fairly suitable. Uh, about 70 mil, is that? Yeah, okay, 70, 70 mil exactly. That's probably pretty good. Let's take that over to the bench. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine if this was the housing, that would look pretty balanced. There's a nice bit of space around that. Okay, so 70 mil. So that really has dictated what my outer dimension is gonna be. So I'm gonna go 70 mil, and I'm gonna put a plus there because I wanna be on the upward side of that, definitely not on the uh, shorter side. And then really what I'm doing is I'm making a box. So I need a certain depth, and in order to mount this up under the dash, I'm gonna need some tabs coming off the sides. Now, the way that I'll probably design that is make this whole top section, including the tabs, as one piece. So when it all folds out flat into a net, uh, hey, let me see if I can just picture this. We're gonna end up with, uh, it's hard drawing this through the camera. That's something like that, and then, our front face is gonna be in here with our cutout in it. Uh, and then are we gonna, uh, yeah, off that. Anyway, something like that. And then we're gonna have sections that fold up and then another bit, something like that, I think. But once I draw it in CAD, that will become more apparent. I may, yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. So really this depth here is the next uh, dimension to work out. And that's fairly straightforward because we can just look at the switch and we can add a little bit. What we're gonna end up with, something around, what's that? 
35-ish maybe. That would be 35. I think that would be enough depth and that would give us a decent bit of uh, tab up here to put two little fixings in to screw up into the dash. So next step, fire up Fusion 360. Now I'm not gonna bore you with a full design how-to on this, that's a whole career in itself. Uh, so I've just run through a little animation and then we get through to a flat pattern. Now the beauty of Fusion 360 is we can take that flat pattern and move into the manufacturing tab and in there we can generate the g-code required for the CNC plasma cutter to cut out that flat pattern. We can even in the software watch a simulation, here we go, of the toolpath so that will show exactly what the cutting head on the machine is going to do when we go down to the machine. And now that we've done the CAD and we've spat out the uh, G-code for the plasma cutter, I need to set the plasma cutter up for the specific material we're using, which is 2 mil aluminium. So at the minute we've got 80 amp consumables in here. That would be excessive for the 2 mil. So I've gone down to 40 amp consumables. So 40 amp shield cap and nozzle. There we go, switch the material over and we're nearly ready. Now that we've got the CAD sorted and Fusion has spat out the G-code, which is the code required for the CNC plasma cutter, I'm just going to switch over the consumables because it was set up for 80 amp for cutting this 6mm steel and we want to drop that down to 40 amp for the 2mm aluminium we're going to be using. So that's the consumables switched over. Steel off the table and the aluminium on. Now that we've got the material on, it's time to set the origin for the machine. That's about right there. And then I'll set the torch height. Unfortunately, I don't have a variable height torch, an auto sensing height, but to be honest, with this low volume uh, type work that I do, I can get around it. It's not the end of the world. You learn. Every time you buy a piece of machinery, you work out what's good about it, what's not. And this has certainly revolutionized the way that I work. All good to go. Let's see what we get. Oh look, I didn't take the uh, film off the back. Oh well, never mind, it's still cut it, hasn't it? So before we plow on, it's worth checking that my design is working at this stage before putting more time into it. Yes, look at that, perfect fit. Winner. Okay, I need to fold this up now so that I can then weld the corners. You'll see that it hasn't transferred the holes into this part. The reason for that is that with the offset, the kerf width that is of the plasma, it would have made the holes too big, basically. Uh, it, it, it's not able to cut the holes without them being too big. So it's easy enough, a couple of holes in here once I've got it all folded up. Just take the burrs off here a little bit, just to make that glide in and out a bit better. It's always nice to work with clean, unburred material. A bit more dross on the back of this because I forgot to take the plastic off. So normally I wouldn't expect to have to deburr it quite this much, but it's really still not too bad. I'm gonna go with folding the side tabs first because looking at this, if I fold the other bits first, I'm gonna to struggle to do them. Whereas with doing those like this, I can hang this off the edge of the machine and hopefully that will save me issues later on.
that's the sides folded and this is where my forethought comes into its own because now I can use this 70 mil wide leaf and it fits perfectly inside my part. Well, it lifted slightly because it's such a small part, but uh, that's where the problem is. Okay, so we've got an issue there. We might need to remake this part. You can see because of the weakness in the window, it's caused that to open up. I'll see if I can dress that gently with a hammer just to improve that because it's only just flared the bottom lip out slightly. I'll do that first before carrying on with the top. didn't really need all that much. I think that's going to be okay. Yep, I'm happy with that. I think that's fine. No need to remake that. Right, now it's the fold along the top. And there we go, I folded the final bend. And there you have it. There is the part in real life that only a short while ago was an indicator switch and a problem that needed solving. And now we are nearly at an end solution. So I've got to weld up the corners, drill a couple of holes in each of the flanges and then work out exactly where that's bolting up to the dash. Clamped it up a little bit to close up that gap. And now it's time to TIG that up. With that, it's looking good. Let's zip that up. And there we have it, the housing all welded up. There's just a few holes to drill now, but let's just check how it's going to work. Perfect. That's a really neat way of using an off the shelf part for a custom application. Right, holes and mounting. Right, there we have our custom designed part all made in-house this morning. And all that remains is to coat that and mount that in the vehicle. Now I am gonna to wait to do that until the steering column is in and the seat is in place, because I wanna make sure that's in the perfect place ergonomically. I wanna make sure that it's not sticking out too far to be vulnerable, but also it's not in too far that it's awkward. And uh, hopefully there'll be a happy medium in the middle there somewhere. So I hope you've enjoyed watching how we design and make a custom part. If you wanna see any more details on what goes into anything on a vehicle like this, you know, specific details, please drop that in the comments below. I'm more than happy to create content that you guys want to see. That's really the purpose of what I'm doing here. And hopefully you've enjoyed this little delve into the detail. As always, please click that like and subscribe button. It really helps us uh, stay motivated to produce these videos for you. And in the next video, we'll focus more on the overall progress of the build. So stay tuned and check that one out. Thanks again, everybody.